Hello everyone, and welcome back to Player One Start. Well, today I have kind of a different project than I usually do. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade my current console, the PlayStation 5, with a new internal SSD. It's huge. About a couple months after I got the console, I went ahead and grabbed one of these external SSDs, which is this WD Black Drive, but I don't really like the way that it just kind of juts out of the front of the console and takes up the only USB-C port in the front. And while I can store games on this, it does not allow me to play PS5 games from this external SSD. You have to use the internal expansion in order to do that. Interestingly enough, you can play PS4 games from the external SSD, at least I could when I had this plugged in, but playing a PS5 game would require me to copy it from the external SSD into the internal SSD that's built into the system. And with its limited internal storage and my expanding game collection, this was becoming a more frequent habit than I want to have. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my old reliable WD Black Drive. I can use this on another computer, so I'll probably do that in the future. But before this, I did save whatever I could to an external hard disk drive. That way I don't have to re-download everything later. Then I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on its side so I can remove the vertical stand. Sadly, this uses a flathead screw, which is probably one of my least favorite screws to deal with, but it wasn't too bad getting this unscrewed. Eh. Alright, well that came off easy enough, although I did lose the screw for just a second. Once it hits the floor, I thought it was going to disappear for good, but I found it again. Setting that off to the side, I went ahead and spun around the console, and maybe you'll see what I'm doing wrong here at first. I did have to look up a tutorial on how to take this shell off, because it wasn't coming off naturally, at least the way I was trying it, and you'll see here that with a bit of force I was able to get that to come off, but I was pressing down a bit too hard and ended up scraping the plastic tabs against the side of the internals of the PlayStation 5. And then I found out this is the wrong panel altogether, and I had to undo the panel with the disk drive on it. Knowing how much force to put on this made it a lot easier to undo the second panel. Next, although I'm actually trying to take apart the power supply, I actually need to spin this around, and then I can see the protection cover for the M.2 slot. I had to get the appropriate size Phillips head, and I was able to easily undo this screw as well. And now that we can spin this around so you can see the whoops. All right, let's just put that back there. All right, so now that we can see the M.2 slot, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the M.2 SSD that I ended up getting. The one that I have here is the Seagate Fire Cuda 530. I did not do a lot of research into this. I just picked up one that said it was PS5 compatible, with my only criteria being this was the cheapest one at the time I went to purchase. I will note, I am not sponsored, and I have no affiliate link with this, so if whichever one you want to grab, as long as it says it's PS5 compatible, you should be good to go. So here's the SSD. I know one thing you really have to look out for with these is making sure that the heat sink is not going to be too tall or too wide to fit in the slot. Once you fit it in there correctly, it should just snap right in. And then the PS5, at least mine, still had a screw in the end slot here that I can just undo and put in, but my SSD also came with its own screw. I'll just keep that for a spare for later. After that's in, I'm done, and I just need to reverse the process of putting the projection cover back on. Then assembling the shell again. Yeah. 
and I should be ready to fire this thing up and format the SSD. All right, now that I have the console booted up, I will note that from here on out, depending on which software version you're running on your console's OS, it could look a little bit different than mine. But mine automatically popped up saying, hey, you have an M.2 SSD, would you like to format it? Which I selected yes from the menu. After it went through its formatting, it did warn me that I do have a read speed of this, and that if I have any problems playing a game on this, I should copy it to console storage to ensure that it loads quickly enough. But the thing I find astounding is yes, that says I'm getting 6.3 gigabytes a second. No wonder why games load quickly on this thing. And next, this is a step I do recommend doing. If you want the games to automatically default install to your larger storage media, like I said, I have two terabytes on this thing, so this is where I want all new games to be installed to, I wanna go ahead and change that in my settings. Why you can't change that from here, I haven't the slightest clue, but once it rebuilds the database, it will boot into your system as normal. And once I got in, I went ahead and went into my settings. I checked out my internal storage and saw that everything there is still good. I went to the M.2 SSD and it says there are two terabytes free because there's nothing on it yet. And I'm going to go to my USB extended storage. This is the hard drive that I had laying around that I copied everything to. And I'm going to start copying everything from here to my M.2 storage. I went ahead and tested this with a PS4 title. This is Just Cause 3. And you'll notice I'm getting nowhere near the write speeds that it says I can get read speeds. And even though those are a bit different on this drive, I will note that the limiting factor here is the hard drive I'm copying things from. Now, this is far and above the copy speeds I'd be getting if I re-downloaded this over the internet, but this will not get anywhere near the maximum read and write speeds of the internal SSD because, again, the hard drive is the limiting factor. It can only go so fast. Let me go ahead and speed through this so you can see the entire process and everything copied successfully. Looks like this drive is going to work. But I know what you're thinking. I wanted to see the maximum read and write speeds of this drive too, so I went into the internal console storage, and I found this one. This was Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. I don't usually play this anymore, so I'm gonna copy this over to the M2 SSD from the original console storage, and... Yeah, this is going a lot better. This is copying 76 gigabytes in what appears to be about 60 seconds. Now this is blazing fast speed. I don't think I've ever seen read and write speeds like this in person on anything I've ever owned in the past. And though some of you may not find this impressive, I am definitely blown out of the water. I've never seen a file copy this fast. If I pull out the advice of the Atari Jaguar and I do the math, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out that I'm getting about 1.4 gigabytes a second write speed. That is, again, nowhere near the 6.3 gigabytes a second read speed, but reading is always going to be faster than writing. And 1.4 gigabytes a second is still much faster than my home internet connection would be able to provide me, so this is definitely a preferred alternative to moving games. I forgot to do a test with this before with the WD Black Drive, but I do know it took a lot longer to copy games, almost as long as it took me to copy games from the hard drive over to the internal storage. So instead of waiting 5 to 10 minutes for a game to copy, I only have to wait under a minute. I wonder what Call of Duty would take to copy on this thing. Well, I don't see any reason to drag this out any longer. Let's go ahead and copy all of the rest of the files I saved to my hard drive over to the M.2. And although I personally think it would be hilarious for you to sit here and watch the entire copy process for over the 35 minutes it took to copy this over, I'm just going to go ahead and speed through it and show you the end. And as I copy everything that I wanted to over from my internal console storage to the internal SSD, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for this video. Hopefully you found this one informative, and I will see you all in the next one. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A special thanks to those Patreons you see on screen. Also, if you like what you see, please remember to leave a like and click that subscribe button on your way out. As always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.